Hey guys, Mr. Arnold. We're going to continue our little journey here through Earth Systems. We're going to talk about the rock cycle, and this is sort of where things become a little bit more immediately apparent to us in Apes class. So essentially we're talking about rocks, and so rock is sort of a generic term. Rock basically means that this is sort of the stuff that makes up the lithosphere, okay? So remember we talked about our layers of the Earth, and the crust is really what we're worried about here, and so the crust is made up of rock, for a lack of a better term. Um, and rocks, of course, are composed of minerals. Now, what minerals are are chemical substances. These chemical substances um, have these very specific structures, these uniform structures, and they form under very specific temperatures and pressures. So different minerals form at different temperatures and pressures. Now, most commonly, um, we're going to talk about minerals that have a crystalline structure, but that's not all of them. Um, this, for instance, is a crystalline structure of diamond, okay, basically pure carbon. Uh, but that's not the case for all minerals. They don't have to have a crystalline structure. Remember, that's a sort of a chemistry term. means just, just means that they're in a very uh, rigid, orderly locked pattern. So essentially, everything here comes down to rocks, essentially, are all formed uh, from magma. Um, and magma basically is that uh, molten rock, okay, or molten material um, that's in the mantle under the crust, okay, that's basically sort of a, a almost a liquid solid combo, okay, so it's melted, pretty slow moving, but still really super hot. Um, if you ever wonder what the difference between magma and lava is, is that magma is what it's called when it's under the ground, and lava is what it's called essentially once it escapes um, and it's out on the surface. So. When it's down here, it's magma. When it blows out of the top and flows out of the volcano, then it becomes lava. And I just love this lava bubble picture here. That's very horrifying. Um, and essentially, this leads us to two pretty important definitions for us, uh, or two pretty important words for us that, as far as rocks. And these are um, extrusive and intrusive. So when rocks are formed under the ground, they're called intrusive rocks. And when they're rocks that are formed on the surface, they're called extrusive. Now, of course, most of the time, if rocks are formed on the surface, they're going to be as lava cools, and that's going to be extrusive types of rocks. Um, so this essentially is our rock cycle, and this is a lot of stuff here broken, um, a lot of stuff here written down. Um, don't feel like you have to copy it all in one part. You might want to copy it as, as a cycle like this, sort of stop, take a picture, whatever, put some labels on it, or you may want to go through as we go through the parts here in a second. But essentially this is the process, um, and it starts, if it's going to start here, um, with magma, then essentially just real quick, the basic process is that magma cools, it forms igneous rocks, igneous rocks are eroded to form sediments, those sediments get compacted together to form sedimentary rocks, and under heat and pressure those things can turn into metamorphic rocks, which can then get melted back into magma and the cycle continues. You'll notice that there's several branching paths here, can go down several different routes. We're not going to worry too much about all those a lot, um, but I want, to know, want you to know the three basic types of rocks. So, first type are called igneous rocks. These are the ones that are directly formed as that magma cools. Um, so the magma crystallizes, that's going to form igneous rocks. It's going to form two basic types, and actually it sort of forms four basic types that sort of overlap. So it forms um, intrusive and extrusive, okay, so underground and above ground, and then it's going to form uh, basaltic rocks, um, basaltic rocks are very dark. Um, basalt is a specific sort of kind of, uh, of uh, uh, volcanic rock. And so if you've ever seen like those uh, samples, like to me what always comes up is in Shawshank Redemption at the end where he digs up the rock and sort of sh polishes it in sort of a black, shiny, almost glass-like rock. Um, that's basaltic rock. It's really dark. It has a lot of magnesium, a lot of iron, a lot of calcium in it that give it that color. Um, so that's one form. And then there are uh, granitic rocks or granite-type rocks. Um, which essentially is what, excuse me, which essentially is what we've got right here. This is a sample of granite right here. Tend to be a lot lighter in color. They got a bunch of different mineral, minerals in them, um, some micas and feldspar and some quartz typically. Um, usually they got a lot of silica, uh, silicon in them, potassium, aluminum, calcium. Um, mostly made up of quartz, of course, which is mostly uh, silicate. Okay, and so that's what a lot of our structure is going to be. So those are our two main types of igneous rocks, and the, uh, as far as what, you know, the other categories of them are, and again, going back to what we had a couple of slides ago, we've got extrusive, okay, where they're formed on the surface, so a lot of times these are basaltic type of rocks, and then we've got intrusive, pardon my writing, <laughs> always awesome at this, okay, extrusive and intrusive, intrusive remembers when it's formed 
underground. And typically, of course, you're going to get a lot of that as granitic rocks. They can be either, though. You can have extrusive granitic rocks. You can have um, intrusive basaltic rocks. But so there's some overlap there between them. Okay, so that's one type of rock. Our second type of rock are sedimentary rocks. And basically, these are formed um, as erosion and weathering happens to igneous rocks. They're going to get broken up into smaller and smaller pieces. Okay, into sediments, we're going to call them. So into gravel, um, into uh, sands, if they get broken down fine enough, into clays. Usually that requires some chemical weathering as well. Um, but that'll break it down into clays. And then when those things get compacted together they're going to form what we call sedimentary rocks, okay? That kind of makes sense. Sediments form sedimentary rocks. Um, and a couple of really uh, quick examples of that, as I run the pen totally across the board there, um, are sandstones. Um, and one that's really uh, common for us is limestone. Now, limestone is kind of a unique example because a lot of times the way it comes about is that it's actually... Um, the leftover skeleton of organic organisms as they die, um, that gets broken down into smaller and smaller pieces and then gets compacted together. Um, and so those are sedimentary rocks. Um, they tend to be a little bit more brittle. doesn't mean that they're not hard. I mean, they are, but they can sort of be easily broken apart. And you can usually see the fine little, little tiny sediments in them. And so our third type of rocks are metamorphic rocks. Um, metamorphic rocks, as it kind of sounds like, they undergo some sort of metamorphosis. I and mean, what the metamorphosis means is that they've got really high temperatures, really high heat, really high pressures together, are basically going to take what was formerly a different kind of rock. So it might have been an igneous rock. It might have been a sedimentary rock. It might have even been a different kind of metamorphic rock. And under really this really intense heat and pressure, it basically sort of presses everything down and fuses it, changes its chemical composition, changes its physical composition um, into a... Comp um, so marble is going to be a really good example um, of a metamorphic rock. Um, another good example of a metamorphic rock would be something like slate um, or and uh, shale deposits. Um, these things get pressed down to form these these sorts of things. Um, so really intense pressures, really intense heats um, are basically going to change everything. Now, if you remember that essentially this is going to go back, okay, all of this is going to go back in a cycle. So those metamorphic rocks eventually, if, they, if the heat and pressure become so great, then eventually they're going to turn back into magma. Now, where do we get the heat and pressure for metamorphic rocks? Well, typically that's going to come um, at uh, plate boundaries or in areas of intense volcanic activity because that's where you're going to get the heat. That's where you're going to get a lot of pressure, like in a subduction zone or something like that. You're going to get a lot of pressure that's going to be able to turn that rock into uh, metamorphic rocks. Um, so we mentioned a few minutes ago about igneous rocks or even metamorphic rocks being weathered and being then turned into sediments. And so there's two different types of weathering. Um, weathering basically means that the is, is the wearing down of the rock itself, okay? So it's a little bit slightly different term than erosion. We'll talk about that in a second. Weathering means that the rock itself is being broken down. And so there's two ways. There's physical weathering and there's chemical weathering, just like there's sort of two types of changes for us in chemistry physical and chemical changes. The same thing is going to be true for rocks. So physical weathering basically means that it is mechanically or physically broken down. Um, and this can happen in a variety of ways. Um, it could be um, the, the action of water or wind over them. So like this is an example of a wind-blown rock. Um, it's kind of hard to see here. Let me zoom a little bit on it. Um, and you can actually see the sort of the striations and stripes in it. Um, that were caused by the wind. The wind is basically just sort of constantly um, blowing against it. And a lot of times, of course, the wind is carrying other sediments with it that are rubbing onto it that are helping to uh, uh, tear it up a little bit. Um, obviously, water, um, freeze-thaw cycles. So a lot of times you'll get liquid in sort of in the cracks and the fractures, and then it'll freeze, and that will split things open even more. Um, and another great example that we don't think about a lot but is really powerful are plants. Plants break down rocks. So trees, as they grow in, um, just think about a sidewalk outside that plants are going to grow up in there and cause cracks in it. That's an example of physical weathering. Um, chemical weathering, just what it sounds like, it's basically that there's a chemical reaction going on. And there are a couple of ways that this can happen. Um, water can have different pHs. Um, it could be a little acidic or a little basic, depending on um, what area it's in and what minerals it's picking up as it flows through. And so that is going to uh, cause some chemical reactions as it runs into some rocks. There's a natural... Um, sometimes there's just a natural amount of acidity um, in our precipitation, um, and that's going to cause some uh, chemical weatherings. We also get a lot of chemical weathering from things like uh, lichens that actually hold on to rocks 
and they're not breaking them down like plants necessarily with their roots just, but they're actually exuding um, uh, chemicals that are actually going to start to break down the rock. Um, so that's an example of chemical weathering. Um, and of course, there's an enormous human impact on the chemical weathering as well. So like this is an example of a gargoyle that's been um, sort of eaten up by acid rain. And again, there's natural acid rain, but we get a lot more of it in modern society because of the sulfur dioxide and stuff that goes up in the air from the burning of fossil fuels. And so the, the precipitation that comes down a lot of times has a much lower pH, and then it's going to react with stuff like limestones and marbles and stuff like that and cause some pretty significant damage to it. So we said that erosion is a slightly different term, and erosion basically means that so, so the rock gets worn down and weathered, and then erosion means that it's actually physically taking that stuff out of that ecosystem, okay? So that uh, pieces of the rock get broken off, and then they, get, they flow downstream. Um, and then they might get deposited somewhere else. That's the deposition part. Um, and I love this example. Whenever I think of erosion, since I grew up in Florida, I think a lot about beach erosion. Um, and this is a great example. I think this is the, if I remember right, this is the North Carolina coast after Hurricane Ida. And uh, this is just great examples here. You sort of see... Um, you've got a lot of vegetation here, sort of out in this little sandbar um, out here. And you've got some houses out here. And then this is so this is May before the hurricane. And then in December after the hurricane, you notice that there's enormous sort of chunks missing. There's a lot of water going through the whole area. There's no vegetation left. Um, so everything is basically what was once all that sand. And remember, sand was originally rock at one point. Um, all that sand is, eventually, is, is actually sort of pulled back out by the ocean. Um, and of course, this is a big effect of hurricane stuff like this. this. Is why climate matters a lot to us environmentally, because things like hurricanes have these big effects um, like this. I know every time um, in Florida, every time there's a hurricane through, one of the things we're really worried about is how much of the beach is basically going to be eroded away and taken away. Um, because of course, if you're talking about the sandy part of the beach, there's not much plant matter there to hold on to it. That's usually what stops things from eroding. This also happens in the case of streams and stuff like that as well. And so erosion is the rock matter actually being taken out of the picture. Okay, so um, that's the basic rock cycle. Um, remember that it, as this erosion and deposition happens, of course, this is the sediment goes down to different areas. That sediment is going to get packed together. And that's what forms our sedimentary rocks. And then as that gets moved to a different part of the crust through plate tectonics, that gets into metamorphic rocks. Those eventually are going to get melted. That magma becomes igneous rocks again. And so we've got a nice cycle, as we've seen many times this year. Um, so hopefully that clarifies everything on the rock cycle, guys. And uh, we'll see you at the next video.